We can think, we can feel, we understand, we interact with others. Then on the other hand, we know very little about how brain works. One of the philosophies of this lab is to do everything we can non-invasively so we can find out everything we need to know about a certain condition without ever really breaking the skin. My really big dream, which I have been working for many years, is to develop a functional neuroimaging technique which can um, see the brain function at very high spatial precision at the same time in a very fast manner. We can learn different things from MRI versus EEG. EEG has a very fine temporal resolution, but um, it lacks the spatial resolution of an MRI. The EEG is very dynamic, millisecond. But the EEG, if you just record over the scale, is very limited in terms of spatial resolution. Functional MRI, which can image the brain function in a very high spatial resolution, very precise, millimeter, or even better. It's very slow. It cannot capture dynamic brain activity. So the goal of my lab is try to develop a fast and high spatial resolution function imaging technique. We take this time course dynamic information and all the spatial information together and connect these two sets of signals together. If I say I want to move my hand, my brain generates a signal, the signal that goes through, you know, from cortex and go to spinal cord, go to peripheral nerve and muscle. So tell the muscle to move and muscle actually move, right? But for, say, disabled patient, for example, they cannot move. But their brain is totally normal, so they may think to move, but their hand cannot be moving. So the subject here is flying through 3D space in pursuit of floating golden rings. He's trying to pass through as many of these rings as possible in a five-minute period using motor imagery-based BCI. We put an electrode cap, 64-channel EEG, on a subject's head, non-invasively. It's just like wearing a swim cap. And after introducing a little bit of gel into each electrode between the electrode and the skin, we're able to pick up voltage differences in different areas of the scalp and use them to interpret what the subject's actual intent is at that moment. So when a subject imagines using an arm or a leg, it actually activates the motor cortex in much the same way it would activate if they were actually doing that thing in real life. And then we decoded the signal to try to find out what the subject is thinking or intend to do, and then use that signal to control a device. In the brain-computer interface, we not just try to control the device, but also try to understand where that signal comes from. So we did a lot of this functional imaging study uh, using both functional MI and EEG. We ask a subject, say, okay, you move your hand, and then you will see that signal is being induced. And then we ask a subject, say, you don't move your hand. Imagining movies, and similarly, the activity can be observed. The promise of research like this is to allow for paralyzed individuals to interact and to communicate again with the outside world.